from the Cheshire Asbestos Victim Support Group, Action Mesothelioma Day. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Peter Kilfall, MP for Liverpool Walton, to say a few words before we release the doves in memory of all those victims who have died over the past year from mesothelioma and other, other asbestos-related diseases. Peter, thank you. Thanks, John. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, I, th I think I ought to note, first of all, those other people that are here. Obviously, we've got a whole selection of mayors vice here. I don't know who they all are, but um, they're generally described as um, a chain gang. I don't know if it's something to do with the, the medals that they wear, but, and this is our own Lord Mayor, Steve Rotherham, here on my left. The various MPs, Jane Kennedy, Louise Elman, and uh, Eddie O'Hara, I've seen. If there are any more, they should introduce themselves. Um, this is a very auspicious day because there's a, an awful lot of work gone on in the background uh, behind not only the Merseyside and Cheshire groups, but groups all over the country. And I'd just like to take half a second out to pay credit to this man, John Flanagan, because John Flanagan has probably done more than any other individual to raise the profile of our best officer victims. There's another person who, who isn't here, and John, I'm sure, would bear me out, the guy who's been, if you like, the, uh, uh, the point man in Parliament on all of this uh, is an ex-miner called Mick Clapham, and he's done absolutely outstanding work, and he continues to do so, not just on behalf of asbestosis uh, victims, but people who suffer from all sorts of occupational illnesses. As we speak here today, as we collect, there are similar meetings taking place. Down the road, for example, in Manchester, colleagues of, of, of mine and, and the other MPs, like Tony Lloyd, uh, Jim Dobbin, Graham Stringer, uh, and various others, are collecting in Manchester with the Manchester Group because the aim of the day is to raise a profile of a real problem. And the problem is, obviously, those diseases, particularly mesothelioma, associated with asbestos. There are many here, I know, that have been afflicted in one way or another uh, by it. I lost a brother with it, so I've seen close up exactly the damage that it can do. But one of the great scandals, of course, is that it's one of the 20, uh, I think it's in the top 20 of the most common cancers but it gets the least kind of investment put into it. It would take something like five, ten million pounds to begin to, to get the actual research centre off the ground so that we can do something about this scourge. In the press release that's gone out, it quotes what happened in Australia, where they put up about five and a half, six million dollars, Australian dollars, to start their centre. And the reason for that was simple. I was there at the last election 15 months ago when they had a... Um, a change of government, but the most telling moment in the whole campaign had nothing to do with the politics. It had to do with a man whose name, I can't remember his surname, it was Bernie something, but what he'd done, he was one of the few surviving people who'd worked for a firm called James Hardy, producing asbestos products, and they all died with asbestos-related diseases. He got himself off his sickbed to actually appear in a court case and to get the second major court judgment against Hardy's and other manufacturers of asbestos products. It was a landmark decision, but he had the courage and the guts to do that. Within 24 hours, he lost his life. But it made such a mark that it actually turned Australian public opinion round. Now, we don't want to see that happen to anybody here, obviously. But what we want to make do is to make sure that there is some kind of research taking place into this dreadful, dreadful disease. Remember, it has been predicted that anything up to about 70,000 people will die in the, in the coming years from, asbestos, uh, from mesothelioma. Remember, too, that the incidence of, of mesothelioma, uh, it's, it's, it's the highest, it's the fastest increasing uh, ailment for women. Uh, we don't always associate women with mesothelioma, but it is there. They washed clothes that were impregnated with this. They worked in places where asbestos was in the air. And they also lived in neighbourhoods where it was pumped out of chimneys. So this is something which is still to really bite home in terms of public consciousness. And today is day one in which we will try, from a parliamentary point of view, to get the government to pledge the money necessary to start a research centre into this pernicious uh, problem of, of, of mesothelioma. Um, I think that's all. 
to, need to be said at this stage, John. And now, as a token, we're going to. I hope these aren't racing pigeons, are they? No, no, the whitewashed dogs. The whitewashed dogs, fair enough. Are you listening? I think we're having one. We've got one at the front. Yeah. And some of the kids. You right? Well, if you leave them yeah. on there, yeah. Yeah. I'm too tall to go to the Yeah. 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 You don't pull it together. Oh, whoever said. Who is going to have them down? Could you be? The photographer. Oh, false start. I will. No, you say that. Crouch down. Crouch down. Crouch down. Both of you. Can you crouch down? Kneel if you want. Kneel down. That's it. Kneel down. Kneel on the floor. That's it. And if you do one pull them out, just we'll lift off. You're there, like you say. Yes. You're the one. Can you just lift them? When I say one, two, three, that's it. Yes. I want you to lift that, and then when I say one, two, three a second time, I want you to lift that one. So okay. we're first. Ready? Yeah. Just want to get the camera myself, yeah. if you don't mind. Ready, kids? Ready? One, two, three, lift. Two left, three left. Oh.